Hello everybody. Hope you guys are doing all right. So what we're going to be doing is triangle congruency. We're going to be doing the proofs. So just bear with me. You'll be just fine. We're going to be um, doing these in a different order. So look at the page numbers. We're going to do 31 and 32, 29 and 30, and then 27 and 28. So be mindful of that. Also, you want out page one. So at the bottom of page one, you have all the congruencies and you have the list of the steps right there. So you want to have this in front of you at all times. All right, let's get started. So we're on page 31. So we're on page 31 of the notes. So let's get started. All right, so this top part right here, um, we really don't care. So let's go ahead and take this and just cross that part out. We do not care about that. Now, you remember, you need to label the triangles. You have to have practice with that because later on, that's what I'm going to be going to be looking for, you labeling these triangles. So that you're going to be submitting the picture of these in a different part of the worksheets. But today, all you're going to be doing is taking notes, but make sure in your notes you are going to be marking up this triangle. So these two triangles, if you don't mark them up, it's not going to count. So make sure you're marking these up. Very important. All right, so here we go. All right, so uh, let's just read this. Given JL is congruent to NM and K is the midpoint of JN and LM. All right, we need to prove that these two triangles are congruent. All right, so, so your proof is going to be the last thing, and the reason will never, ever, uh-uh, no, 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 be proof. That will never be a reason, ever. Okay, so remember, when triangles are congruent, the only way to prove the triangles are congruent will be one of these, SSS, SAS, that thing right there. That's the only way. So anytime you say a triangle is equal to a triangle, this is it. These are the only ways that you can prove the triangles are equal to each other. These are going to be one of your answers. You put anything else, you're just being silly. All right, so here we go. So the first thing we're going to have to do is do the givens and make sure you label as you go. All right, so first of all, JL is equal to NM. All right, so that right there is here. How did we know that? It was given, and we need to label. So every time we say something is equal, label the picture. So here's J to L, so I'm going to put a single notch, is equal to N to M. Let's put a single notch. All right, so those two are equal to each other. And we label that. Okay, the next one is K is the midpoint of JN. Okay, so every, as soon as we said that the midpoint, that's going to be special. So I'm going to put a star next to that. That's going to be a chunk of information. So um, what it means is once we say that right after it, we have to say that a side is equal to a side. So that's going to be a chunk. So K is the midpoint of JN and LM that was given to us. And as soon as we say that, it's going to be a chunk of information right there. So um, that's going to be special. All right, so we know that K is the midpoint of J to N. Okay, so here's J, here's N. So this right here is going to get cut in half. So this midpoint is here, so this line, so this would be equal to that. So JK is equal to NK. Okay, how do we know that? Well, that has to do with what we just said, midpoint. So that's the definition of midpoint. But we also said that it cut LM. So here's LM. And that got cut in half in two. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So LK is equal to MK. And that's what we just have. And that, that was also a definition of midpoint. So in this case, there this was um, an extended chunk. So all of that was off of this one given. All right, so as of so far, we have this is equal to something. And then we also have these two things are equal. Now, I understand that these were vertical, but we have to do all of our givens first. And if our givens is enough, we would stop. We already have three bits of information. And when we travel around the triangle, we get 
side one, side two, and side three. Same thing here, side one, side two, side three. So we have enough information to say that these are equal to each other because of side, side, side. So why are the two triangles equal? Side, side, side. I do understand that, hey, this angle is equal to this angle. However, we have to go off by what they gave to us. If your givens are enough, we would stop. All right. Okay, so that was the first one. Okay, so that was number one. At this moment, you have about 5% mm, understanding. You're just going with it. Okay, let's go ahead and go to page 32. So we're on page 32. So on page 32, we're just going to ignore this part because we already talked about it. So let's go ahead and go to number two. All right, remember, we're going to label this as we go. All right, just fake it till you make it. You Every time they say something's equal, mark it. Just fake it. All right, so JM is equal to LN. Okay, I don't know why yet. Let's just mark it. JM is equal to LM. Okay, now how did we know that? Oh, that was given to us. That was given. I'm going to check mark it because I already I took care of it. Okay, then they gave us another. So this said that there was another given. Okay, that's the other given right here. Angle JMN is congruent to angle LNM. Okay, so let's mark that. So let's look at the middle angle, uh, the middle letter. That will be M and N. M and N. Ah, crap. There are two possible angles I'll, I'll be talking about. So let's get a little specific. J, M, N. That would be the top part. So this angle right here is equal to N. So it's one of these two. So L, N, M. And so that would be the bottom part of that angle. So we just marked it. Now, how did we know that? Oh, it was given. Okay. And then they said M, N is equal to N, M. All right. So I'm going to put a double because the single is already being used. Now, why would that be equal? Let's, well, it wasn't given to us, so what would be the other options? That would be the reflexive properties because we didn't do, there was no, it's not part of the givens, right? So why would those be equal? Reflexive or vertical? Oh, reflexive because it is the same side. Reflexive. That's a reflexive property. And then finally, why are two triangles are equal? The only way that triangles are equal are one of these. That's it. There's no other possibility. So we have to travel around the triangles. When we travel around the triangles, we start at the one side we don't have. Which is, so, um, so I had two sides given to me. So I go. So what do you have the most of? Angles or sides? Sides. We go to the third side we don't have, which is right here. And now go in a circle. And I get side one, angle one, side two. And same thing here, side one, angle one, side two. So that would be side, angle, side. And that's what we get. Okay, side, angle, side. Boom. All right. And then let's go to page 29. Let's go to page 29. So on page 29, okay. Um, we're just going to ignore this part right here. All right, let's do it. Okay, so, um, all right, just fake it till you make it, right? So the first thing they said, so remember, we're trying to prove the triangles are congruent. So that last thing is going to be side, 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 angle, side, one of those, right? Okay, so SQ bisects this angle and this angle. Now, how did we know that? Okay, that was our given because that's always the first thing we do. Now, that's important. So that's going to be a chunk, right? That's going to be a chunk. So um, meaning that as soon as we say this, we're not done. We actually have extra information off of that. So we know that SQ bisected this angle right there, and it bisected this angle. So it bisected two angles. So these two angles are going to get cut in half. So angle Q right here. So this angle, so uh, S, SQ cut this angle in half. All right, so that means that this angle up here is equal to this angle down here. So basically angle Q is equal to angle Q. So let's get a little specific. Angle RQS. So that angle is equal to the other Q. 
and let's go T Q S. Now, how do we know that? What was said in order for that to happen? We said the word bisect, so definition of bisector or angle bisector. Okay, it also cut S in half, so S and S. So this top angle, RSQ, is equal to TSQ. Now, what was said for that to happen? That's definition of bisector, so angle bisector, because what was cut in half? An angle, so it would be angle bisector. But if you just said, just look for the word bisector, you'll be fine. So this is a chunk. Those are stuck together. So just make sure that that idea stays together. Okay, and then, so now we did our given and everything that goes off of that. All right, and then down here, they said reflexive property. So that means that something was equal to itself, right? And that would be right here. Here's the side that equals itself. I'll put a single right there. And we would say QS is congruent to QS because of reflex property. Now these two triangles are equal for some reason. What is it? So we have to travel around and go side, 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 angle, side, something like that. So what do you have more of, angles or sides? Angles. So on one triangle, you have more angles. So I'm going to go to the third angle and then go in a circle, and I get angle, side, angle. So angle one, side one, angle two, same thing here. Oops, boop, forgot that one. Okay, so that would be angle one, side one, angle two. Yep, so that, so that I feel really good about that. So that right there is angle, side, angle. Okay, and then down here, don't care, we already talked about it, so let's go ahead and scratch that out. And we're going to go to page 30. We're going to go to page 30. Okay, make sure you are labeling the triangles or this does not count. Okay, here we go. So they said bisect. Okay, so that's going to be a chunk. So as soon as I say bisect, I know, I know, I know that two things are going to be equal to each other. All right, so let's do that. Now, YZ bisects this angle. How did we know that? Given. So right after I say that, I have to say what two things are equal. So once I said YZ bisects, so here's YZ, and it bisected angle Y. So Y is the one that got cut in half. So the, the angle on the left is equal to the angle on the right. So Y is the one that got cut in half. That's the middle letter. So these two are equal to each other. All right, what's the name of this one? That would be angle WYZ is congruent to angle so I said WYZ, that'd be XYZ. So these two angles are equal to each other. And why was that? Because I said the word bisect. So this is a chunk that goes together. And then what was the other given? That would be angle YWZ is equal to angle YXZ. So W is equal to X. Oh, that's really easy. This angle here is equal to this angle. Okay, so then um, we would go uh, YZ is equal to YZ. Okay, so let's label it. Now, why would that be equal to itself? Oh, that's the reflexive property. And then finally, why would the two triangles be equal? Okay, anytime I say triangles are equal, here are your only choices. Everything but S and S backwards, right? So when we travel around the triangle, Okay, what do we have more of, angles or sides? We have more angles. So we go to the third angle and go in a circle, and I get AAS. So angle two, angle one, side one. Same thing here. Angle two, angle one, side one. So this is AAS, or you could say SAA. Both of those are still the same thing. All right, now let's talk about the chunks for a second. Be very mindful that sometimes they're not going to put this in order. So if they put this number three up here at number one, then one, two get shifted down. Okay, so this would have to be together. So if I move um, number one down, number three would go on top and number one, two would be stuck together. So that's what I mean by chunks. Be mindful that they're not always going to give you the givens in this order. So just be mindful of that. So that's why I'm teaching you to look at the chunks. So this chunk will always stay together. So if this given was first, then this number one and two would stay together when we move it down. So be mindful of that.
Okay, let's go move down. Okay, we're going to ignore this part. Because we don't care. Because we talked about it already. All right, let's go to number four. All right, so on number four, they said that um, MP, they said MP is perpendicular to LN. Okay, so the fact that they said that, so they didn't say something was equal to itself, so that means that that's going to be a chunk. Okay, so as soon as we said that these two bisect, or sorry, that these two are perpendicular, so um, MP and LN meet at a 90 degree angle. That's what that means. That was given to us. So thus, angle P and angle P, so those, so P on the left and P on the right are right angles. Now, why did we know that? What was said in order for that to happen? This little symbol. And what does that little symbol mean? That means perpendicular. So what was said for this to happen? That little symbol. And what was that little symbol? Perpendicular. So definition of perpendicular. Okay, so that was a chunk. So those will always stay together. Okay, so we just said angle P on the left and angle P on the right are both right angles. They're, that means that they're both 90 degrees. Okay, and then number three, refle reflexive property. Okay, so, um, so I know that you want to say, oh, the givens, right? So the L... Uh, ML is equal to, but you got to be mindful of what it says, right? Oh, the reflexive property. Wait a minute. What's the reflexive property? That would be MP is equal to MP. So boom. And then they said this given. Then they said this given, which is ML is equal to MN. <laughs> ML, so double, is equal to MN double because I already use a single. So boom. Okay, now how do we know that? Because it was given. Now, finally, we know triangles are equal. The only way to prove triangles are equal is everything but ass and ass backwards, and your ass is so big it's triple ass. So it's one of these, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, um, side, angle, angle, or hop, height, and loose leg. So when we go around this, what do we have more of? Angles or sides? Sides. So we're going to go to the third side we don't have and go in a circle. I get side two. Side one, angle 90. Same thing here. If I go in a circle, I would get angle 90, side one, side two. Oh, wait, those don't match. Oh, I just wrote it backwards. Side two, side one, angle 90. Okay, they match now. Oh, wait a minute, that's ass backwards. The only time that you can have an ass is hypotenuse leg. So is this a right triangle? Yes, so it's all right. So it's really hypotenuse leg. It's really hypotenuse leg. So why are these two triangles equal? Hypotenuse leg. Sweet. And that's how we labeled our picture. All right. And now we're going on to page 27. We're on page 27. So on page 27, triangle proofs, right? Okay. Um, so what does CPCTC stand for? Okay. That's very important. So that stands for Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So basically what we're saying, once you prove that this triangle is equal to this triangle, whether it was side, 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 angle, side, whatever it is, we now know that this angle equals this angle, this angle equals this one, and this angle is equal to this one. We also know that this side, these sides are equal, these sides are equal, and these sides are equal. So once you prove that the triangles are equal in any way, we now know that all six parts, all three angles, all three sides, are equal to all six parts over here. That's what we're saying. So you need to recognize the acronym and the words. So very important. All right. So let's go down to number one. So um, so what I'm saying is once you prove the triangles are equal, you might have to go the extra step and say CPCTC. So right here, you see that? So it's not triangles equal to triangles. So once you 
If it says anything else, more times than not, it's CPCTC. So the step right before this will be that the triangles are equal. So the triangles are equal, and you might have to go an extra step and go, oh, this little part's equal to this little part. I already know it's going to be CPCTC already. Just pointing that out. All right, let's go through the motions. They said AB is equal to AD. How did we know that? It was given to us, and you label the picture. AB is equal to AD. Okay, so that's the first thing. Then, they, then there's another given. Okay, so given, match that up. We know that BC is equal to DC. All right, let's label it. BC, 1, 2, is equal to DC, 1, 2. I already used a single, so I have to use a double now. And the next part was reflexive property. The only reflexive property here is AC is equal to AC, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and when I go around the triangle, what do you have? Side, side, side. So now that you know the triangles are equal, why would, uh, and so you would stop labeling now. Once you have triangles are equal, once you have triangles are equal, stop labeling. Once you know the triangles are equal, stop labeling. So we're not going to label anything else. So now we know that angle C up here is equal to angle C down here. Now, how did we know that? So notice I'm not marking it. I was just pointing. So why were those two ang angles equal? Because the C, P, C, T, C. Once that the triangles are equal, why are the little par other parts equal? Because of C, P, C, T, C. Okay, let's go to number two. All right, so on number two, so um, we have these, and right here, we're saying that this little part's equal to this little part. I already know the reason will be C, P, C, T, C. I already know this, so that's awesome. So in the step right before it, we'll be saying that the triangles were equal because of side, 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 angle, side, one of those. All right, let's just go through the motions. All right, since it is blank that PS is parallel to QR, now how... Uh, so that was given to us, right? So that's given, and that's F. So that was given. So we know that these two lines right here are parallel. Now, I could do little arrows, or you can just darken the lines just to keep that organized. So know that these are not equal, that we know of anyway. They are parallel. Okay, so... Once they're parallel, so we didn't say that they were equal, so this is going to be a chunk. This is going to be a chunk. So once I say that, I have to immediately say something else where they're equal, which is right here. So off the givens, once that things are parallel, my best friend is either ultra interior where you make a Z, or corresponding where it's a copy-paste job. Now look at the triangle. Does this look like I copied this triangle and pasted it down here? No. This looks like I rotated it. So that's going to be a Z idea. Okay, so one, so we know that PS is parallel to QR, and QPS is equal to angle um, SRQ. How did we know that? That was given, so let's label it. So P and R. So here's P, put a single, is equal to R. Both of those are given. Now there was a typo on this, guys. There was a typo. So everyone fix this, please. That is PSQ is equal to angle RQS. That was a typo. Please fix that. There's a typo on that. Okay, so um, angle S is equal to angle Q. So uh, once the lines are parallel, we can do a Z thing, right? So angle PSQ, so I'm going to put a double here, is equal to R. QS, RQS. There's a double. So these two, so when you do a Z, the top of the Z and the bottom of the Z are the parallel lines. Okay. So those two angles are equal to each other. Why? Because of alternate interior angles. Because that's our best friend. So these two angles are equal because of alternate interior angles of parallel lines are congruent. And we label that. Okay. We also know blink by the reflexive property. Okay, so where's the reflexive property? Oh, alternate interior was A. All right, um, reflexive property is right here. The, uh, the sides that are, are sharing each other. So QS is equal to uh, QS. 
So we would either say QS is equal to QS or uh, QS is equal to SQ. Now, technically, Q to S on this triangle is equal to S to Q on the other triangle. So this, this one is the better choice. So if that is available, you would use this one. So let's see. Oh, right here. And they said QS is equal to QS, so we're stuck with this one. So G. So QS is equal to QS. That's letter G because of reflex property. But this would have been the better choice because Q and S need to be in this uh, same position. Q on this triangle needs to be an S on that, on that other triangle. Okay. Due to the blank congruency postulate. So why are these two triangles equal? That's what they're saying. So why were these two triangles equal? So we have a single angle, double angle, a single side because we just said reflexive property. So that so if you have more angles on one triangle, you start at the third angle you don't have, go in a circle, we get angle, angle, side. So because the angle, angle, side, that's letter C, we can state that the two triangles are equal. So all, the only choice where triangles are equal is this one right here. So that'd be D. We would say triangle Q R S is equal to in tri uh, triangle S R Q. Okay, since we know something, we can now say that P Q is equal to R S. So once we say that the two triangles are equal, we're not going to label anymore, right? Now, why would PQ be equal to RS? Because of CPCTC. And that was letter H. All right. I know you guys don't like the, you uh, don't like this. You probably like the chart better. It's a little more organized. All right. Let's go ahead and flip to the back. 28. All right. Fake it till you make it. We know X is the midpoint of these two things. So that's going to be a chunk. All right, so X is the midpoint of WY. That's the first one, right? So WY, here's WY, got cut in half, so that means this and this are equal. So WX is equal to YX. Okay, because the definition of midpoint. So we got that one, and then it's also to uh, VZ. So that's another one. So here's VZ, that got cut in half, so double, double. So V x is equal to zx. So we took care of that one as well. And then they said angle x is equal to angle x. Now why would this x be equal to that x? Well, if you go past your givens, we would try reflex property and we would try vertical. Those are, are, those are wonderful. So this is equal to this because of vertical. Vertical angles. Okay, and then finally, we would, uh, we're would not finally, two more steps. Okay, now we're saying uh, SAS. So that means that we automatically have a triangle is equal to triangle. So triangle is equal to triangle. Okay, why would those two triangles be equal? Because the side angle side. Um, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I know that these letters go with those letters, so I'll just use that. XWV and XYZ. So when I go X... W, V, I went single angle, single side, and then I went down the side. Single angle, single side, nothing. Yep, so those matched up. All right, also, um, awesome. And then if we have to go a step after side angle side, why are these two little angles equal? Why is W equal to Y? W equal to Y? Why is that? Notice we're not labeling that. As soon as you say the triangles are equal, stop labeling. Why would these two little parts be equal? CPCTC. Do not overthink this. Do not overthink. So if you have to go a step past side angle side, 99% of the time it's CPCTC. Okay, number four. All right, so on number four, we said JM bisects this angle. So that's going to be a chunk because we didn't say something was equal, so there's an idea to that. All right, so let's just read this. They say JM is equal to... Um, uh, sorry, JM bisects KJL, so, that, so I'm going to underline that. It bisected J, so J got cut in half. So that means that this is equal to this. 
And they said that KJM, so J is equal to LJM. Now, why did we know that these two angles were equal? What was said for that to happen? The word bisect. That's what happened. So looking at the choices, bisect, that would be right here. That's E, definition of angle bisector. I said the word bisect. So I already took care of that. Then um, it is also given. What was the other given? This right here. So that would be angle JMK is equal to angle JML, which is letter F. Okay, let's label the picture. M is equal to M, right? So JMK, so that's the top one. I'll put a double, is equal to JML. That's the bottom. Put a double. So, um, so we know that those two are equal. Also, we can say blank by the reflexive property. Okay, where's the reflexive property on here? That'd be JM. So JM is equal to JM. So the question was, is it JM equal to JM? or is it JM equal to MJ? JM on this triangle is single to double. JM on the other triangle is single to double. So that so this would have been the better choice. And we have that right here at A. So, so JM is equal to JM, and that is letter A. All right. You can also apply blank congruency statements. So congruency statement, that would be side, angle, side, angle, side, angle, stuff like that. So when you travel around the triangle, what do you have more of, angles or sides? Angles. So we're going to go to the third angle, go in a circle, and I get angle, side, angle. Be careful. A lot of people put side, angle, side when you're not paying attention. I've done it myself. Just be mindful of that. Angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. And that's G. Okay. So conclude that these two triangles are congruent because of angle, side, angle. And finally, due to blank, we can also say that JK, that's letter C, or is equal to JL. Now, how did we know? So once you prove that triangles are equal, you stop labeling. Now, how did we know these two little parts are equal? Because of CPCTC. So if you have to go a step further, 99% of the time, it's CPCTC. All right, sweet. Okay, so that's it for those notes. And then the next time around, we are going to actually start putting stuff into the computer. All right, have a great day.